We're at a stage now where we're coming down to the wire. But as most people who work on projects know, it takes 10% uh, of the time to do 90% of the work. It takes 90% of the time to do the last 10% of the work. Um, Mar's going to go over some of the details now. I'm going to just show you some parts. We've got the treadles are nice and pretty done. You saw the legs. They're done. We've dry fitted all the parts. And that's that wonderful little axle Mar suggested, which is going to work wonderfully. So Mar, go through basically where we are now and what we need, what we need to do. All right. Um, well, there's a lot of drilling of holes that I'll skip. Um, we need to cut the mortise and make the peg for the cross piece here. Um, we need to drill the holes for the legs and cut the legs to length. We need to cut the angles on the tables. We need to cut the treadle axle because um, these treadles have to ride up and down on an axle and uh, fit that to the legs. And again, that's another 10 degree angle. Um, and then, you know, it's finishing work. Yeah, it's finishing work. Uh, Lots of sanding and asking the customer uh, what stain she wants, but I think we'd like to go with the cherry stain. I think I like the cherry stain. Yeah. The one thing we do have to do is there's a check here at the end of this one. So instead of using the bow ties I mentioned earlier, what we're going to do is we're gonna, I'm going to router in a groove. I'm going to put a spline in there of a contrasting wood. It might be mahogany or, or, or walnut or something like that. So it just adds a little bit of contrast to the workpiece. Um, we have to open up some dados here just a little bit. But oh, we're... I forgot. We have to draw more draw oh. peg the, uh, the uprights in. Yeah, everything is going to get draw pegged that we can. So it's going to be real nice and tight. You don't need to use glue if you draw tight. Uh, so that's that. And then, uh, like Mara said, what do you want for stain and would... Lots we, of sanding. Lots of sanding. Yes. But that's where we are. There's two of them. One's going out the door, one is staying here. And the next step now is to... Mara needs to turn the buttons. I need to turn the buttons for the to axles cover the here. ends of the axles here. Yeah. And we have to make the, the parts that allow these to go against each other. Basically it's an axle with a, with a U-shaped piece of wood under here and they're independent from each other and it just allows you to do that. So onward and upward, make more parts, fix, fit more parts, glue in more parts, do the parts. And you saw me cut these out on the CNC. They came out a little rough. So Mara is now going to make these presentable, cleaning up all the fuzzies and... Yep, you gotta, um, I'm, I'm gonna chamfer the edges with a chisel to uh, make it less likely to chafe the yarn when you're weaving. Cue the high speed. As you can see, I've got some more frog hairs that I have to sand off, but basically um, this is the process of making the heddles nice for weaving um, with chamfered edges so that the uh, threads are less likely to chafe as you weave. To fasten the pawl <clears throat> to the block that's going to prevent the gear from rotating to keep the threads tight, we use a screw. Now this is replicating an antique or supposed to look like an antique. So what do you do? This is a modern screw. It's you know nice little uh, CAD plated or zinc plated uh, flathead wood screw. Well, <clears throat> they make replica screws like this, but they're hell expensive. And I learned a trick to, when I when I built this. <clears throat> this is a 1728 French infantry Charleville musket. I built two of these, and the trick is. A lot of the furniture was fastened with straight screws in the day. But again, modern screws and the antique looking screws were really expensive. Bang. So the trick is, 
you take the head and you antique it on a, on a belt sander in a file. And then you throw this in vinegar for a day or two and makes it, like, and makes it look old and antique. So let me show you about the head, head treatment first. So I've screwed it into a piece of wood because it's going to get hot. I don't need to burn my fingers. I'm going to turn on the sander. I'm going to kind of randomly move it around, cut off the, heart, the, cut off the sharp edges, and that'll give it a more uh, hand-forged look. From here down, it doesn't matter. It's going to be buried in the wood. I don't know if it shows up in the camera, but that's basically what I'm doing. I'll sand it and file it a little bit and then throw it in vinegar for a couple of days and I'll show you the end product once it comes out of the vinegar. What I did to put the spline in was I ran this over the dado. Yeah, I have a, a fence that I could put it up against. I ran it, the dado head through it at a quarter inch and then I had a leftover piece of cherry from a previous project and I glued that piece of cherry in here as the spline all the way in. Next step, of course, is to flush this down to the surface and then continue on from there. Mara drilled holes. All the holes. And uh, uh, they go all the way through each uh, mortise. And what we're going to do next is um, put the um, uprights in and mark the tenons and then offset that hole slightly so that they're draw pegged. If you haven't done draw pegging before, or if you don't know about draw pegging, this is a great technique. I built two doors for a, for a schooner, sailing vessel, uh, and I, for the front hatch, or scuttle as we called it. And I used no glue. I put the entire thing together, draw pegging, it never even got loose. So, let's show you the draw pegging technique. Step one is you put the tenon back into the mortise all the way down. You take your brad point bit, and I, brad point's best for doing this, and you put it back into the hole, and you give it a little thwack like that. Of course, pliers because it's a tight fit. Now, what we've done is we've marked a center hole where that brad point bit hit it, and it's the dead center of that hole right there. Now we're going to do an offset that will make the peg pull this part into the workpiece. So there's, there's the hole, the little indent from the brad point bit. We want to move this way. We want to move it up about a sixteenth of an inch. So the hole is offset to the top. So when the peg goes in there, it pulls that workpiece back into the, back deep into the hole, deeper into the hole. I'll just mark it with this. That's it. This is a scratch all for for metal working, but we're going to drill the hole right there. So when we drive in the peg, as you can tell, it's going to pull the workpiece deeper in. There's the bit. There's the bit. So Mara and I are going to do the part of this build that we really didn't dread, but... I dreaded it. We're drilling the leg holes, and they have to be a bit precise, especially at the front, because that's where the axle goes for the treadles, and it's all a bunch of degrees. You saw 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees. But you've got to get it right so it all lines up. So we got the jig. We're going to do that you saw we built earlier, and we're going to set that up, and we're going to drill these holes. And Mara has a stool story. Yes. I built this a couple years ago. You can see the legs have shrunk a little and I need to shave them back down. But getting the angles for these legs right was nail biting. And um, uh, that's why before we did these, um, we looked up jigs on YouTube and Kevin has posted the link. And um, so that we get it exactly precise because the stool it doesn't matter if things are a little off. For the treadles on these tape looms, it has to be much more accurate. So we found jigs and it will work much better. 
And that's a glorious piece of cherry. I have more, and now that I know how to make the jigs, I can finish them. So let's go forth and drill some holes. So it's hard to see in the camera, I know, but I take the bit out of the drill, and there's, a, there's, a, there's an X at the center. And I take and mark that there. So now I've got an indent. Then I take the jig, put the drill bit down into the jig, and line it up with that dent that I made, as you can see. And that gives us our index. So now we control the hole. Okay, that's got to be... Let me get it lined up. We're getting, we're drilling legs, guys. We're drilling the leg holes now. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. This part makes me nervous. Okay, go ahead and clamp that down. Yeah. I got the wood. Okay. Does that look square? It looks square to me. Look inside. Yes. It okay. looks square to this edge. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, I mean, if it's off a degree or, or so, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. It will when we uh, fit the treadles. Cause the treadles. Okay, folks, cross your fingers. Oh, you can't see me. My head's. Cross your fingers. I told you it was going to be a big ass drill. Okay, folks, here you go. So this is the jig clamped in place. I knew I'd find a use for those wooden clamps someday. And we've drilled a hole right through the bottom of it. Now let's take the clamp and jig away and show you what we got. Down, seven to go. Well, let's just let's double check everything now. A <laughs> little bit of blowout on the bottom. Yeah, <sighs> that looks cool. So here's a hole. It's, it's one inch in diameter, it's 10 degrees, kind of hard to tell, I'm shooting straight down onto it, but it's 10 degrees to the table, so that's where the leg is going to go, and they're going to be splined in place. Now we're going to cut the angles on the tables, and I'm going to use something I've had probably 20 years. This is, this is a track saw system that, I don't know if it predates Festool, it's from a Canadian company years ago. I don't even know if they're in business. But what it is is a track saw, track, and then you get a plate, and like some of the other manufacturers, you get a plate that goes on the bottom of your circular saw, and then you cut the line. So we'll do the big ones that way. I don't know if we can do the small angles that way. We'll give it a shot. Then Mara's going to plane them down to make them smooth and pretty. Yes. Yep. So we'll get started on this. Ears off. <sighs> nice. Well, there you go. So we've got the angles cut where they're supposed to be. They have to be planed to smoothness. And after that, Mara's going to go ahead and do a chamfer all the way around with it with a uh, chamfer bit. Then it's sanding all the surfaces so that everything, get all the pencil marks and everything off. But for next thing, I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drill the, the, the angled holes in the front legs for both of these. Um, the angle holes are where the treadle axle goes, yep. and he's made a jig for that. You can't have enough jigs, man. So we have a, another nail biter. We have to um, drill the angled holes for the axle that comes out for the treadles. It has to be 10 degrees. So we're going to drill those. We we'll have, may have to fudge a little bit when we start putting things together. But the thing is, the axle doesn't have to turn because the treadles just move up and down on it with their little U-channels. So let's drill some holes. You want to show off the jig? Oh, the jig. Well, yeah, show okay. off the jig. Hold on. Let me. I'll bring the camera over. I'll show off the jig. This is this is a jig I put together. It has the angle for the 10 degree angle for the ramp, a stop block. The fence is set to the center of this piece, and then it's clamped in place so it won't shift back and forth. So let's drill some holes now.
Okay. Holes drilled. Or at least in two of them anyway. Well, uh, we've now cut the slots for the wedges in each leg and cut the wedges. So now what we're going to do is um, put glue on these little wedges and hammer them in and then... And we're going to glue yeah. the legs in as well. I mean, yeah. a lot of the times these would just be wedged in place, but let's have the added insurance of belt, glue. Belt and suspenders. Yes. Belt and suspenders. So we'll show you one and then we'll go on and do the rest and we'll move on to the next step. First things first, we're, we're using hide glue. Tight bonds, hide glue liquid high glue because it gives us a, gives us a, a longer working life, or work, uh, excuse me, a longer time to work the part. You can brush a little bit on here and then brush a little on the wedge, take the wedge on, stick it up in here and hammer it in place. So let's get some glue. Gluey. All right. Just at the top, kinda. Okay. Oops, can't do it that way because the top's bigger. All right, up we go. Put that other one in so we'll get the idea. Yeah, the height. No, no, no don't glue huh? it yet. Just just put it in so we can get the height correct. Oh, I thought we were. No, we're not going to do both at the same time. There we go. Level. And that's not going anywhere. So you saw the process. Glue, slice glue. By the way, we cut the, uh, wait a minute, let me get the saw. We cut, we cut the slots for the, uh, for the wedges with uh, one of these Japanese pull saws, this general purpose one, and it worked really well. It gave us just enough width to put the wedges in. The wedges are made of ash, so it's a much harder wood than what we've got for the legs and the rest of it. So number two. And there you go, folks. They are all glued up and wedged with the high glue. Give me an example of what's going on here. So you see that leg comes through the table. There is a glued in ash wedge. And then we'll cut those off with a flush saw and then sand it to the surface. And it'll eventually look something like that one right there. There you go, folks. All nice, sanded flush with the quarter sawn. Beautiful quarter sawn wedges in there from of ash. Of course, when that stains up, that's going to be kind of more contrasty. Drop pegging. What is it? Who does it? Who cares? Anyway, what we're going to do is drop peg. Mara drilled all the holes, and she tapered the pegs so we can you know, put them in the holes, and they'll grab the wood and pull it down tight into the hole as we described earlier. Now the screws that I showed you earlier that I antiqued and then threw them in the uh, vinegar, hope this shows up on camera, but that's, that's what they look like now. They look more antique-y. The vinegar darkened it, took off the, uh, the, the coating. So there we go. And that actually goes here. Yep, I fitted the poles, had to sand them down just a little bit for length so that they intersect correctly with the ratchets. So uh, everything's a Everything matches fit. up, everything <coughs> fits. So there it is, folks. It's now a porcupine. We have these dowels sticking out. We had a little problem with one of them, so we had to glue it, glue that down. But uh, the porcupine, once this is dried and cured, those will get cut off and sanded, and this will be pretty much done. We're done. See what I did there? So, as you can see, one is stained and ready to be picked up. The customer's going to come pick it up. This one's going to get stained and finished today. So, Mar, go on to the final details that you had to do to make it work. Okay. Um, so I had to uh, align these heddles so that there's a straight line from the front roller to the back beam um, because if that is not aligned up with the holes here, it, you get the tension wrong 
on one of the sheds, but that's weaver stuff. So for you weavers, that's what that's about. And get the tre uh, treadles to the right height. Um, that's after I uh, stained it and put bold linseed oil finish on it. Um, so it's good to go. Yeah, the finish is boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits. Mineral spirits. About 50-50 mix. We call it a spit coat in boat building. But in this case, it, it dries quicker and it dries a little harder. And we're going to sit it out in the sun to get a little bit more suntan. Here's a couple little details I wanted to show you. One is a little a better close-up of the antique screw that we use for the, for the spline. And this, and, and this one is uh, the rose head or forged nails that we use for the treadles. Now the original had forged nails for the treadles, so I wanted to duplicate that. And this is the spline. The spline is cherry, the body is pop poplar, so when this gets stained or gets, gets, gets finished up, that's probably gonna pop really nice. So, until next time, have a great day and make good things out of wood.